Hey guys, uh, as you know that once you have created any file system in Red Hat Linux, you need to make an Internet CFS tab to make that file system mount automatically or say persistent across reboots. Now, there are three ways you can go about making the entry in ETCFS tab to make a file system entry persistent. One way is to specify the block device. The other way, the second way is to go about uh, mounting it or make an entry with a UUID of that specific file system. And the third way of doing it is to specify the file system label. Okay, so today I'm going to demonstrate how you actually go about making these entries in ADC FS tab file system through either of these ways. And uh, there are pros and cons and uh, there are different, uh, these are all different methods which you can use. Uh, so like uh, for this to demonstrate, I have with me a test VG that I have created and beneath it I have created a test wall one. So the primary, the foremost task here is to create a file system on it. So uh, let's make it an uh, ext4 file system with journaling on and let's create it. Let's echo the exo status. It's done. Beautiful. So uh, to mount this file system, you specify the uh, file system type and you specify the block device. And now let's create a mount point for it as well. The test one we intend to mount it on. So we specify it with mount hyphen T ext4, specify the block device here and the mount point, that's slash test one. So when we do a df hyphen h, we see that uh, this specific file system is mounted on slash test one. Now, in order to make this entry permanent, we need to make an entry in the edcfs tab file. So let's do it using the first method that's uh, with the block device. So let's make the entry test wall one, that's the volume. And the file system is gonna be test one. File system type is ext4. Let's set the parameters to default. Make it a dump device and for FSCK, make it one and two. And let's save it. Let's cross check the contents. Looks good. And let's umount slash test one. And running a mount hyphen A will demonstrate whether it reads from the EDCFS tab file or no. And it does. So that's that that's one way of doing it. Second way of doing it is through the UUID. It's a unique identifier. And there is a command called BLKID. And you specify the file system. And it displays you the UUID, the unique identifier that's associated with this file system. The file system type ext4. And label we have set that's that's test wall one. I'll I'll, sh I'll demonstrate you shortly how you actually go about setting up this label. So uh, let's go about uh, mounting the file system. So uh, let's edc fs tab and let's select this UUID option that that we have and let's remove this block device entry here. And specify this. Uh, and let's remove the inverted commas. That's important. And let's U mount slash test one. And let's do a mount hyphen A to see whether it reads from the file or no. And yes, it does. And you can see the contents of EDCFS tab. It's mounted via UUID. Third way of doing is, is uh, via, via label. So uh, you can use a label on any of the file system and e2 label is the command, e2 label. This will, uh, and we specify the file system along with it. So uh, this one is dev mapper test file one. And it doesn't has a label associated. So let's make a label associated with it. And you specify this and you specify the label across, say uh, we create or give it a label test wall one. So now when you run e to, e to, e to label this dev mappers slash test vg hyphen test wall one, it will display you the label that's associated with this file system. Now let's make an entry in EDCFS tab using this uh, label. 
and see if it mounts using the Arduino. So uh, let's remove this UUID that we have in place. Removing it completely and specify a label equal to test wall one. And let's see, the F hyphen H currently shows us slash test one. This file system being mounted on slash test one. So let's U mount test one. And let's run a mount hyphen A and running a DF hyphen H. Beautiful. Perfect. It's, it mounted via that as well. So I show you the contents of EDC FS tab as well. So either of these ways have got their own benefits, as in uh, most of the file systems that are either coming via a storage device or an iSCSI storage. At times, it's more convenient to map them with the UUID and make a corresponding entry in EDC FS tab. And uh, supposedly, say you got a deployment where you're going to deploy 100 servers and you want to make this EDC FS tab file standard across all the 100 servers. Uh, then for the file systems that are standard with this operating system or which you intend to create in your operating system layout, you can specify them with the label and... Uh, the block devices may differ for these labels again, but you know, you will be having a synced up EDC FS tab file. I hope this has been informative for you and thank you so much for viewing.